and happy Easter. We are so glad to see you here today. My name is Christy and I want to welcome you to Spring Hill. I serve with the digital ministry team here at Spring Hill. So whether you are joining us in person or if you're tuning in online, we are so excited to share Easter with you. And we have three upcoming opportunities here at Spring Hill. I'm going to highlight those top three, uh, but if you're in person, you can scan the QR code that you see around the building. That's also our digital bulletin and it has new information added to it every week. And for our online friends, you can check out that same link. It'll be in the comment section below. So let's jump in to the top three at Spring Hill. Number one, today's celebration day. We can live out the joy of Easter morning every single day. Every day we can celebrate Easter by thanking God each day, serving in our community, and investing in God's word. And number two, guys, Spring Fest. Spring Fest is coming up. It's a fantastic opportunity to invest in our community. So mark your calendars for Spring Fest. It's going to be on April 21st. It's going to be a spring festival full of carnival games, uh, face painting, local first responders, and hands-on activities. We have Lowe's coming with their Kids Make It Take It workshop. We're really excited about that. It's going to be at Dover Foxcroft Farm, so be sure to sign up to volunteer so you can invest in your community or head over to our website so you can be a part of our event announcements and notifications. Number three, we want to make sure you have all of the tools to live out Easter. And one way to do that is to text the word MIRACLE to 434-423-5300. MIRACLE to that number. And then you're going to get a link back with some reading plans, uh, how to live out hope in everyday life. So friends, there you have it, our top three, living in Easter daily, upcoming Spring Fest, and those free resources, how you can live out hope every day by texting Miracle. You guys, you can find all of these highlights on our website or that QR code. Happy Easter, friends. Let's go into worship together. and thank you for being here. My name is Steve Nethery. I'm the pastor here. We have already had a beautiful uh, sunrise worship service with a really good attendance here in the cemetery. Thank you for being a part of the 9 a.m. worship service in person. And those of you worshiping online, we appreciate you being here also. We also have an event worship service taking place at the barn at our Dover Foxcroft Farm at 10 o'clock. And so many people are over there prepping. But we are glad that you're here today. And then after this service, we'll have some small groups and we'll move into the next 15 service. This morning, we hope that you encounter God. This morning, we hope that you encounter the resurrection. And so I want to say, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you for choosing to be here. We just uh, sent out a mission team along with many churches in Central Virginia, and that team went to Kentucky, and they shared the Easter story with thousands of children hundreds of uh, public school educators and administrators, and we do that because of Easter and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, as you encounter God, as you hear from God through the music, the videos, the interviews, the Word of God, we want you to connect with God, but we also want to connect with you. And there's a QR code right there in your pew. You can scan that. That'll get us connected. You can text. This number, 434-423-5300. You send a text to that. It's up on the screen, and you just put connect, or you put Easter, or you, you put children, or youth, and that, that'll get us connected, and we can begin a conversation. Afterwards, if you want to visit with someone that's been up here on the stage, we welcome that also. But thank you for being here. And then part of worship is giving. Uh, this morning, we will not pass an offering plate, per se, but uh, there's box one here here in the side and in the back, but you can also give online. Uh, you can mail a check in to us. You can come by the office during the weekday and say hello. We really like that, all right? And so to have some time to visit. Uh, and you can text give, you can scan the QR code. We want you to know though, when you give, it touches people right here in this area with the good news of Christ and ministers to people right here as we cooperate with people in this area, the Mid-Atlantic, uh, the state of Kentucky, and even internationally. This morning, I have friends who have been worshiping now probably for a couple to three hours already in, uh, in Africa. You and I have friends that 12 hours ago 
They were worshiping in the Philippines and ministering to people there. And so worldwide, the beautiful thing, worldwide, people are celebrating the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning as we sing, as we hear from God's word, as God speaks to us, let's keep that in mind. Would you bow your heads for a brief word of prayer? And would you stand with me, please, as we do that? If you'll please stand together. Father in heaven, thank you for the hope found in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the people being here. Thank you for those who came earlier and worshipped at the sun service. Thank you for those who are going to be worshipping over here at the Dover Foxcroft Farm. And for those who will be here at the 1115 service. And then God, for the many people online, we thank you for your love, for your hope, for eternal life found in Jesus Christ. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us, whoever believes in him will live forever.
Hi, today we're going to hear a couple of testimonies. A testimony is when somebody tells you something that's happened to them. And in this case, it's something that is bringing about a change. For us, we can know that we have a change when we meet Jesus Christ as our Savior. And I want to kind of show you what that means to you. You see, when we start out in our lives, we're just living over here and going through life and stuff happens and some days we have bad days and some days we have good days. But we want to make sure that we can one day get to heaven because for all of us, life ends. So how can we get from here on earth to heaven for eternity? There is one answer. Jesus said in the Bible, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the answer. And he bridges that gap between us and heaven. Now, if you don't understand that right now, I want you to think about this. Today we celebrate the fact that we serve a living Savior. That means Jesus died for us, but he didn't stay dead. Three days after he died, he rose again. Not just one person saw him, but many people saw him after he returned. And Thomas, who doubted that it was actually Jesus because he saw him die, said, I don't believe it. I don't get it. I have doubt. And Jesus said, go ahead, Thomas. Put your finger in my hand. Put your hand in my side. Thomas did. And he believed. So just remember, we serve a risen Savior that can take us from whatever happens today into eternity tomorrow by our faith in him. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. I can't wait to hear what Jesus is doing for these people today. This is what they felt like when it happened. And today, it's how we should feel too. Because what it meant for them, it means for us. We stand, let's worship together.
got some blessings that I don't deserve. I've got some scars, but that's how you learn. It's nothing short of a miracle I'm here. I think it over and it doesn't matter. I know it comes from above. I've got miracles on miracles.
in this congregation, we wholeheartedly believe in science. In this congregation, we wholeheartedly believe in history. In this congregation, we also wholeheartedly believe in miracles. Because we believe in a God who gives us Christmas. Came out of heaven, complete glory, into the womb of a lady, and was birthed. And out of, the, out of that, we celebrate Christmas time, God with us. A verse that's infamous in Christianity at Christmas time is Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, and it says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. The miracle story of Christmas. By the way, we like Christmas. We like to receive gifts. And if there's anyone here that doesn't like to receive gifts, please see me afterwards. We will get you some professional counseling. <laughs> we like to give gifts. We like to have family members over and friends, and we like the Christmas carols. Some of you like Christmas so much that you start listening to Christmas songs in September. That's a miracle. The life and teachings and death and resurrection of Jesus, we call that Easter, it, it's a miracle. Uh, historically, it's documented. It's true, not just in the Bible. There's what is called extra biblical material about the life of Jesus Christ also. And regarding Jesus as a historical figure, you, you and I have to determine just what we're going to believe about that, just to human being, another man, another prophet like Muhammad or some religious uh, person. Uh, we have to think about that. Paul, writing to a group of people in a letter in the Bible called Corinthians, says that, look, I, I want you to know that Jesus appeared to Peter, then he appeared to uh, the other disciples, then he appeared to another group of people, and then Jesus actually appeared to over 500 people after he had been raised up from the dead. By the way, if you're in court and you have 500 witnesses, the odds are you're going to do really well. 500. And, then, and he says, oh, and that, that's just the beginning of the witnesses of the resurrection. And then life change happened. These disciples that you read about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John who when Jesus was put to death, they were afraid. They went back to their old lifestyle. They were hiding. By the way, the courageous ones were the women. They were hiding. They, were, they didn't want to be seen. One of them who was tight. He and Jesus were tight. He said, oh, man, Jesus, I, I'm, I'm going to go with you till the end. And Jesus said, actually, you're going to deny me. Oh, I'll never do that. And he does. And it breaks his heart. It breaks him down. But afterwards, Jesus appears to him, and it builds him up. And Jesus builds him up. And then God, the Holy Spirit, comes upon him. And this man that had denied Jesus some 50 days before stands in front of people because of the resurrection and preaches a three-minute sermon. And some of you are thinking, three-minute sermon, I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> and thousands come to know Jesus Christ. So life change. Christmas, Easter, Christianity is about God doing a work in our lives. And today's message is entitled, uh, Everybody or Everyone, you can see it kind of faintly, and that's on purpose, needs a miracle. You're like, well, well, I, you know, life's pretty good right now. I don't need a miracle. There would be many people in this room that would tell you, if you're thinking that you don't need a miracle, you're living so much in the natural 
that you're a sad case. And you're missing out on potentially what God might have for you as an individual, a married couple, a single person, a college student, a child. You might, you might be missing out on this thing that Jesus Christ himself said is the abundant life. This, this life that overflows. The psalmist said, my cup overflows. By the way, I, I will ask people, how are you doing? I just don't hear people say, Man, I'm living the abundant life. I just don't hear people say, my cup is overflowing. I don't, I don't hear people often say who have teenagers, my teenagers are awesome. What I hear is, whoo, man, I, I'm busy. Whoo, whoo, I need a vacation. Whoo, man, I'm exhausted. Whoo, whoo, whoo. Man, have you seen that traffic over there? Whoo, whoo. Man, I got a brand new car and it broke down. Whoo, whoo. Man, I need another job. Whoo. Man, I need another wife. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Rarely do I hear, oh, man, I, I've got to tell you. Let me tell you about a miracle. I've already heard it from the people who went to Kentucky with what is called Hope for Appalachia. I've already heard it in this church through the children's ministry when we did our snowball. I've already heard it in this church through our ministry leadership team and through the deacons. I've already seen it in this church as people passed away and their testimony of Christ was shared with hundreds of people who came to a memorial service. I've already seen it in this church with people who were in the hospital and we did not think that they were going to come home and they're home. We've seen it. As a matter of fact, before we move into these stories that you're about to hear, I just want to share with you that today you might be the miracle that somebody needs. I want you to hear that again. Today when you go to lunch, this week when you go into the office, for those of you who might be leaving today and traveling during spring break, you might be the person that God wants to use and there's someone that you're going to cross paths with and you're the miracle that they need. The eye contact, the smile, the blessing. And so everyone needs a miracle. Everyone. You're going to hear a story of a gentleman that grew up in this area. Very little church background right here in this area. You see, you think everybody who lives in central Virginia goes to church. They don't. Then you can hear a story of a man that grew up going to church and hearing the stories and, and yet just recently God did a work in his life where he took him beyond knowledge, beyond knowing things and into, oh God, I'm yours completely as of today. He was there, but now he's there. So one, no church background, very little knowledge of the Bible except his grandmother helping him understand Jesus some. Another one, religious background, church background, both of them smart, intelligent, married, thoughtful, hardworking men who are blessed immeasurably. And you're not going to hear all of their story. There's just not time for that. But you're going to hear enough to know that you need a miracle. <laughs> Financially, in your family, in your relationship, you need it. I need it. And we're going to talk about this. June, we walk through. But first, I want to introduce to you a gentleman by the name of uh, Zach. And so, would you welcome him with a round of applause? Give him some encouragement first. How you doing, Steve? How y'all doing today? Good seat, man. Happy Easter. And happy Easter to you. And you want to say it back to him? Happy Easter. This guy's, this guy's coming off of a, a youth weekend retreat where he helped some students encounter God, and he's coming off of a Hope mission trip where he helped children and teachers uh, encounter God. He's been able to go into a, a prison and share his testimony of, uh, and help prisoners see this Jesus who can change lives. So uh, we're going to walk through this pretty quick, yep. okay? So um, give us just a little bit about Zach. 
All right, well, I grew up in the Greene County area. Uh, I've lived here my whole life, um, went to school here. Um, you know, I was that person that said, uh, you know, I'm gonna leave this area as soon as I graduate high school, but that, that never happened. <laughs> 33 years later, I'm still here and I still love it. I love the, the scenery here. I love the, uh, all the history of our county and our state. So I'm definitely gonna be sticking around for a while. <laughs> and uh, you have family in this area? Yes, yes, my, uh, my family uh, all grew up around Virginia. Uh, my dad, he went, he lived in Montana for a while and did all the schooling there, but he came back to Virginia and we've been here pretty much all of our lives. So. And so it's not just here, but like the whole central Virginia area, yep. small business owners, yep. uh, all that type of stuff. Yep. All my family. Uh, a family heritage here in central Virginia. Is that true? Yes. They've all built their lives here, businesses. So. They came from nothing practically. So uh, introduce work. your bride to us real quick. That's uh, that's Amanda Shiflet right there. That's my <laughs> wife. That's the amazing woman, the one and only. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Uh, and then you've got some uh, 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 stepson yep. that uh, you uh, appreciate and hang out with, and we hung out with him, and yeah, he we, drove we both of us crazy while we drove him crazy, right? <laughs> yes. So that was a good stuff. So the, the chicken was, it, was fantastic. So tell us some about your religious or non-church background. Share that okay. some with us. Well, I, like I said, I didn't grow up with much of a church background. Uh, my, my background was, before I accepted Christ, was in the things of this world and carnal desires. Um, I went through many things. I, I pretty much tried everything to fill this heart of mine that was broken. You know, I've always had this empty void. You know, I tried money, careers, uh, relationships, and ev even at the worst of it, I, I turned to drugs. And uh, sorry, I'm a little nervous up here. I can talk to people, complete strangers, but the people I know, I get a little shaky around. And, and, <laughs> and y'all understand that, correct? Would but, you let uh, him know it's okay? Yeah. All right, all right. But um, you know, with with money, I, I tried career after career, hopping jobs, thinking that I could find the right salary, or if I drove a nice vehicle. You know, when I got a 2010 Toyota Tacoma back in 2010, I thought I had it all figured out until I got the first payment. And, and then I learned, <laughs> I learned pretty quickly that, yeah, <laughs> that wasn't gonna fix it. Um, All right, so tell us, I mean, you mentioned to me that you think maybe, possibly, you were in a church building how many times prior to coming to Christ? Maybe twice, at the most. And you just recently, in this past year, have come to know Christ and he's done work in your life and you heard about him from your grandmother and things and you were baptized here with her. But now you're sure you think, hey, I grew up in this area and I was only in a church building a couple of times. Yeah, no, no more than two or three times. I think I went once when I was four and once when I was about 14 to an Easter service. So that was all. <laughs> all right. And so how, how did you encounter, encounter Christ? Um, well, I was at a very desperate time in my life. Uh, I, I had, me and my wife had split up. We were almost going through with a divorce. Um, I, had, I had nothing, I, I had lost everything. Um, and finally, in a call of desperation, uh, we were separated, been separated for three months. I sent a message to my wife and I just said, hey. It had been three or four months without a word and I just, all I could muster was hey. But uh, I just had a moment of clarity where I, I was just so sick and tired of living this way. I had spent my whole adult life just completely lost and utterly empty. I mean, I had nothing fulfilling in my life. You know, I, I thought when we got married that, you know, her love would make me love myself, but, but it didn't. It just, it made me put unreal expectations on her. And um, finally, uh, she, she, we talked a little bit that day and she decided to come meet me at a park. And when she walked up, I just could look at her and I could see something was different. Amanda was always a believer, but I feel me being a non-believer, I kind of pulled her away from Christ. So when we were first together, you know, she would talk about God, but uh, I would always kind of push it away, like try to get off the topic. And um, when I seen her that day, I could tell something was changed. I could tell, you know, she had this way about her. She, you could tell just, you could see the love pouring out of her. You could see the understanding. And, I just looked at it and was like, I want that. You know, I, I don't want to live this way. I don't want to be this empty shell of a person that I am. And from the first moment I looked at her, she, she first said, you know, we started talking about getting back together. And she's like, well, you know, I want to go to church some. Maybe we could try to go to church together. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll go to church soon. And meanwhile, in the back of my head, that little voice told me, yeah, you go a couple times and, you know, 
you'll just tell her, I, this ain't for me, and I'll get out of it, and then we'll, everything will be good. But um, the first time I walked in here, uh, I told God that I gave, I gave him my heart. I told him right here in this building Amen. that I was, <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> that, I, that, hit, that my heart was his and that I gave my life to him. And so did I just hear you say that in the midst of a separation, your, your wife came up and you saw something in her? Yes. If you're in a difficult time right now, we want you to know that God can be present in your life and can make a difference in your life and help you walk through that. And you don't have to live in that darkness. We also want you to know, correct, that your life and Amanda's life, my life and the others who have accepted Christ, yes. we bear witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Is that true? Yes, it's very true. <laughs> you were just with Hope for Appalachia. We had a great time at the Eagle Eye Conference Center with teenagers. Oh, yes. I mean, a fantastic time. What's one other thing before you move down that you want these people to know uh, about you or about Easter? Uh, there's this, I wrote this down about Easter. I've been thinking about this a lot this weekend about this question. And uh, I just wanted to tell you all, I believe the Easter story is our story as well. For me, before Christ, I was drowning in sin so lost I did not know how to find my way out. But when I was introduced to our mighty Savior, Jesus Christ, he showed me that through him and, and him alone, I could be saved from my sins and be truly forgiven and begin to take back the freedom I had lost so long ago. We were all drowning in sin before Christ. Like, but like the story of the resurrection, we were too once dead, not physically, but spiritually. And once we are saved and are washed in our Savior's blood, we are reborn anew. As it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become anew. When we were living in sin, we had no chance of salvation. Like when Jesus hung from the cross, the Father could not look upon him. He turned away from him in his suffering. But after he rose, he was one with God again. Just like when we accept Jesus in our hearts, we were dead in sin, but now we are alive through him. And when God looks upon us, he doesn't see a sinner. He sees his perfect son. Amen. Amen. Come on, man. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Up on the screen, you can see two verses out of Matthew. I'm going to move out of the way here. I just want to read, read this to you. If you'll read along silently, please. Matthew chapter 28, verses 5 and 6. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. And this is Mark chapter 16, verse 6. Don't be alarmed. This is an angel speaking. He said, You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen, and he is not here. See the place where they laid him. This historical, scientific, miraculous event is life-changing. For me, for many in here, and then you heard this from Zach. But not just from Zach, but you heard from Amanda, even though she didn't have to say a word. And how it has changed you're not going to hear from another gentleman that's a part of this congregation. This gentleman is a part of this church family now, he and his wife and his two boys, because a fellow that many of us loved dearly, who has passed away, went over to their house, began to visit with them when they first moved in, got to know their names dog over there and visit some. And then he invited them to a special event during the pandemic. An outdoor event that we host at the Dover Foxcroft Farm, which is right over here, which is in just a few minutes hosting a worship service, Easter egg hunt, many things with many young children and families. They came. They met some people. They heard about some things. And God starts doing a work in their life. You might just be the miracle that somebody needs today. 
and this week. This family is now experiencing the beauty of God. They were a solid family prior to. Don't hear me wrong. But they're now in another realm, in, in another level, where their cup is overflowing, where they are living the abundant life. And this man experienced, in his words and in my words, a medical miracle, and yet a miraculous medical kind of thing. And you'll hear just a little bit of that. But he primarily wants you to hear that even in all of his knowledge of, of the Bible and a solid family man, God recently has done something in his life because of the resurrection. And so uh, this, this man's uh, name is Nick. So would you welcome Nick up to the stage at this time? for coming up and happy Easter to you. Happy Easter y'all. <clears throat> hey I need the Holy Spirit because when I agreed to do this I was like oh, all my friends from the uh, my family from the uh, the uh, 10 o'clock small group are going to be at the, at the uh, 10 o'clock outdoor thing so now here I am in front of all y'all and I'm nervous as can be so <laughs> I need some Holy Spirit in my life right now. Because all of your small group. Because all my small group is, is here. Is all over there. Oh wait wait I we got one right there. Okay. All here now. We got right on there. Yeah. This will be easy. Okay. So uh, it, it's all good. Um, smart hard working fellows here. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your family. Yeah so unfortunately my family's not here. Uh, my wife and my two uh, boys Nolan and Liam are uh, in Chicago. Uh, celebrating Easter with my, my wife's extended family out there. So uh, they're on spring break and enjoying themselves out there. They called me yesterday, let, they, let me know they got out there safely, and uh, thank God for that. So, um, but yeah, um, I grew up in uh, southern Delaware, uh, a town called Seaford. Um, my family, my mom and dad are both from Pennsylvania. They uh, are back now in Pennsylvania. Um, so most of my extended family is all in that area, uh, both in the Philadelphia area and then in the northwest part of the state, uh, up towards, I guess, Buffalo would be the closest metropolitan area. Um, definitely God's country up there. <laughs> so, real quick, uh, you shared this with me briefly. Uh, how did you meet uh, Stephanie? They, they need to hear the, this little word. Uh, yeah, my, uh, my best friend from college uh, knew Stephanie from high school. Um, and I was working in the restaurant industry at the time. Um, and I had briefly met Stephanie uh, when I was in college uh, at, uh, at a party uh, in 1998. Uh, we, we had met and went on a couple of dates. I drove all the way from Pennsylvania to Virginia uh, to take her out. Um, and then she called me uh, when I got back from taking her to a Valentine's Day dinner uh, and broke up with me because she didn't want to do a long distance relationship. Um, and then uh, 2005 rolls around. I'm living with my best friend in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, got off of a long shift at a restaurant, uh, go back to watch a football game, and I walk in. There's these two beautiful women sitting on a couch um, watching football. And uh, uh, my team and my best friend's team lost in the last second of the game, only game we lost all year. We're despondent. I'm sure the two girls on the couch are real impressed with the way we acted. Um, but anyways, uh, I, I looked, and, and there was some recognition there. And I'm going, hey, Jay, is that is that the girl that I, I met back in 1998? He's like, yeah, that's Stephanie. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, and you were, what was the word you used? Smitten? I was smitten. Yeah. I was very, I you was saw smitten. her and you were like, oh yeah. I was like, yeah, that she, yeah, she's just as gorgeous as she was back then. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it took me a while to, uh, uh, gin up the courage to, and this is BC before cell phones. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, so I finally ginned up the courage to email her um, and ask her out on a date, um, which uh, it was it was it wasn't until the spring of the next year I did that. So, yeah, but it was uh, definitely an intervention. And beautiful things since, yes, right? Beautiful things since. And so tell us a little bit uh, a little bit about your because you have some church history. I do. I do. And knowledge. So give us the the brief of that, please. So I grew up in the Methodist and Presbyterian churches. Um, my family's Presbyterian, but we didn't have a good Presbyterian church where I grew up, so we grew up in the Methodist church, um, and I loved it. Uh, I did Sunday school. I did church choir. Um, anything you could do within the church, uh, I, I did. I loved it. Um, it got to the point when, when I was in middle school and high school, my parents would drop me off at church because 
they weren't going anymore, but I wanted to go. Um, I loved the pastor. I loved uh, everything about it. Um, and then maybe, I guess, my junior year of high school, um, it was uh, discovered that the pastor was having an affair, um, and that completely broke my faith in the church at the time. Um, so I kind of gave up on organized religion for a while. Like, I was still spiritual but not religious, if you've ever heard that before. Um, you know, there was still some belief there in a higher power, but, you know, I, I just gave up on the church. And then uh, when Stephanie and I got together, you know, she's very devout, uh, very Catholic. Um, so in order for us to get married, we, she wanted to get married in a Catholic church. So I went through the whole uh, conversion process, um, did the whole year-long thing, uh, became Catholic, uh, actually right up the road here at Incarnation in Charlottesville. Um, and then that was a pretty powerful moment. Uh, it was great. Um, but as, as we kind of got, you know, more involved in the church, it wasn't family-oriented. Uh, we started having kids, and we went through the baptism process and everything. It just didn't feel like there was a family aspect to the Catholic Church. It was kind of a, uh, you know, you're going to sit here and do that, and then when the kids would start crying a little bit uh, during the Mass, it, you'd get these little dirty looks like, get that kid out of here. <laughs> God's speaking. Um, no, well, maybe God's speaking through him. Come on. <laughs> So it, it just didn't feel right. And then, like you said, Greg, uh, the pandemic was a good excuse. Uh, happened about the same time as our For priest. For you to stay home and no longer go to worship, well, right? Or but our, 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 our priest left about the same time, and we were really fond of him. We got a new priest who wasn't very personable. Um, we actually went down to the beach and met him um, before he came to our church. And, and we were like, hey, we're really excited to have you in Charlottesville. He's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Good to meet you too. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, that was difficult. Um, but the the pandemic, I'm I'm gonna be quite honest with you. I love the pandemic. I'm an introvert, um, and so I got to stay home and work and do those things, and uh, didn't have to go anywhere and be and do that whole thing. So, um, but Greg came over, and, and gosh, I, I miss Greg like you wouldn't believe. Uh, uh, he came over and introduced uh, us to to Spring Hill and. Not only were we doing, you know, the outdoor thing at, at, at the Dover Foxcroft, but we uh, ended up on the driveway at, at Chris uh -huh. Marco's house and, uh -huh. uh, you know, sharing the word with, with uh, other people there and really found a church family um, through a difficult time. So, and when you say the driveway, you mean we had these little, little pockets yep. of worship services all over the place, yep. and you ended up with a bunch of young couples with young families, yep. right? And, and God and did a work in that. God did not, not only did work in that, but it was the timing, which was okay. interesting, too, because uh, three weeks into us going to the driveway, I experienced uh, a medical emergency um, where uh, my pancreas basically attacked my body. Um, and I ended up uh, in a coma uh, for 10 days. Um, I was given a 70% chance of death. Um, they weren't sure what my brain activity was going to look like. Um, because I'd been deprived of oxygen, I was basically inhaling nothing but carbon dioxide for a while. Um, so at, at one and point, this was they, a long this, stint. This was a yeah. This was a long, um, this was a long drawn out process. So uh, I was in the ICU for uh, 19 days, um, just trying to get my systems back in place. Uh, it just it, they weren't really sure what it was going to look like. I mean, it was to the point where we revamped our house. We uh, we made our house wheelchair friendly because we weren't sure what I was going to look like when I got out. And um, during this time, are people helping you? Everybody from this church that was in that driveway group, everybody, I mean, people we don't know from this church were helping us. Uh, meal trains, coming over to watch the boys, playing with the boys, um, just engaging with our family, people that didn't know us. Um, and so when, when I finally got home, you know, we talked about it and we're like, this is our church family. This is, this is where we belong. And so you just went to a, a men's getaway yep. with your son. Yep. Share with us what happened in your, in your life at that time. Yeah, so uh, we went to the Men's Ignite weekend, and I've shared some of this with a small group, so forgive me if I'm repeating. Um, but uh, we went and uh, 3,500 men uh, at, down at Liberty University listening to amazing speakers. And... Um, I was kind of in a, in a, in a little bit of a, uh, of a funk when we went down, um, but I, I, I took Nolan, my oldest son, with me, and uh, it was a Friday evening and, and a Saturday event, um, and I wasn't sure what to expect because we'd never been to anything like that before. I wasn't sure if he'd be 
old enough to understand some of the things that they were talking about. But God moved in me in three ways. Uh, the first was um, I got to meet my hero. Uh, I got to meet Brian Dawkins, who was, uh, he was a, a Hall of Fame safety for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, and they say don't meet your heroes. I say you've picked the wrong heroes if you meet your hero and you're disappointed. Because that man, that. that man is amazing. Um, just humble, uh, passionate, intense, um, and just a, an extremely, extremely amazing human being. Um, I told Pastor Steve, and we met the other day, uh, I've never felt as bad for somebody as I did uh, at, the, at the event when Brian Dawkins, you know, he, he's got biceps bigger than my head still. He's been retired for 12 years, and he's one of those that kind of gets rolling a little bit, and he's towards the end of his talk and uh, just getting passionate. And uh, they have one of those, they have musicians, you know, playing in between speakers, but uh, the, the lead singer is also the piano player. And they had a system where, you know, the guy, you remember the old Nickelodeons where the guy comes out and plays off the entertainer? Well, this guy's got to come out and play off the speaker, right, if he's going over time. Well, this guy's he's off in the wings, and he's kind of like this because <laughs> Brian Dawkins is really going at it. And he's like, okay, his time's up, and I've got to stroll over to the piano, and I've got to play Brian Dawkins off? <laughs> so uh, that was interesting to watch him. So that was the first thing. The second thing was obviously the speakers. Uh, some of the messages they, they gave, and the first was the, the first and most impactful for me uh, was the gentleman who talked about the, the idea of try versus train. When we talk about things like resolutions and we talk about what we're doing in our lives, we say things like, and I'm going to put this in the, in, the, in the framework of men, okay? We say we try to be better husbands. We're going to try to be better Christians. We're going to try to be better fathers. Why don't we change that to be, let's train to be better husbands. Let's train to be better Christians. Let's train to be better fathers. When we, when we talk about trying, we give ourselves the out to fail. We give ourselves the out to quit. When, we, when we're kids, all right, or when we're parents, and we put something on our kids' plate, and they put it in their mouths, and they're like, oh, I don't like this. They spit it out. We go, well, at least you tried. All right? So we give, we give that, that mental aspect of, you tried it, it's okay to stop. When we think about training, we, we give professionals training, right? We, we want surgeons to train. We want lawyers to train. We want all these people to train in their professions to be better at it. And we give them the ability to fail and then come back the next day and be better at it, right? So that's what I mean by try versus train. So let's start training to be better Christians. The most impactful thing for me, and I hope you, Nolan, are going to watch this at some point. <clears throat> we were called down to the front of this giant worship area um, at, the, at the, the hall at Liberty by one speaker to, to be prayed over as better men. And Nolan and I went down and we knelt before everybody and, and laid hands on each other and everybody prayed over us and it was amazing. Um, my heart was absolutely full. So we went back to our seats and then two speakers later, <clears throat> another speaker asked for people to come down and, and have themselves prayed over. And I was like, you know, I, I'm okay. I just had people lay hands on me. I'm good. You know, this, is, this doesn't feel like I need to go back down but I'm happy to pray over anybody who goes down. I feel this tug on my, on my shirt, and I look over, and it's Nolan. And he's like, Dad, I'm going down. I'm like, all right, buddy, you want me to come with you? And he looks at me, and he goes, Dad, I got this. I got this. And I want to put that in context. This is an 11-year-old boy who the day before was too embarrassed and too self-conscious to make his own order at Chick-fil-A. This boy... This 11-year-old young man now is saying, Dad, I got this. I got this. And he goes down and kneels in front of 3,500 men and has himself prayed over. And I looked up at God and I said, all right, man. I said, I said you got me. You got me. And that has taken said, you, you into me. a new realm. I'm there. I said, you've got me. Because we, we as Christians are asked to do hard things. 
and we are in this this fight for the soul of our kids, for the soul of our families, and and we've got to be all in or not in, and I'm all in. Hallelujah. All in. And you say thank you, Lord, and thank you, Nick. Man, thank you. Thank you. The message of Easter is about being in. It's about giving your life to Christ. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says this, that if you will confess with your mouth Jesus, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Will enter into a relationship with God. And in closing, as the music team comes up, I want us to read these two verses together. He is not, or you read it silently, I'll read it out loud. He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he told you when he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hand of sinners, be crucified on the third day, and be raised again. That's Luke chapter 24. And then here's John chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. And later in that story, Jesus reveals himself to many, to many people, and their lives are changed. We want you to know that Easter is about God revealing himself to you today. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, here's how you do that. You say, God, come into my life and forgive me of my sins. I recognize Jesus is the way. Come into my life and forgive me of my sins and take control. If you have made that decision and your Christianity is kind of blasé, Easter Sunday 2024 is the day for you to say, God, I'm all in. I've been 50% and I've been 70%, but today I'm leaving here. I'm all in. And for those of you who are already all in, today's the day for you to say, God, it's not that I need a miracle, because I do, but I want to be a miracle in someone else's life. So use me in ways that I cannot understand. You can text us and let us know about that decision. You can visit with us afterwards. You can scan the QR code and let us know about that decision. Would you please stand and let's sing this last song together.
Thank you for being a part of the 9 a.m. in-person worship service. For those of you who are worshiping online, we want to say thank you very much for joining us online. I want to end by saying happy Easter. Happy Easter. Right on. Jesus Christ is alive and well. We hope that you have been encouraged today. Feel free to visit with me or anyone on this stage afterwards, maybe even the person next to you, if you have questions about the faith. And again, I want to reiterate, in this congregation, we believe wholeheartedly in science. In this congregation, we believe wholeheartedly in history. In this congregation, we believe wholeheartedly in the miracles of God and the life change that happens because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The top three that we want you to remember is, first, we be encouraged to live Easter in the power of God every day of your life, and we can help you with that. We can come alongside and help you with that because it is a beautiful thing and your cup will overflow and your life will be abundant. And then the second one is we want you to know about Spring Fest that's happening on the 21st of April. Put that on your calendar. You, you can text. Just text FEST and to that number, 434-423-5300. You'll receive information on that, okay? Because we want you to be there. We want you to invite others. And, and let's celebrate the incoming of spring, and soon it will be summertime. And then the third one is, if you're interested in doing some reading about miracles out of the Bible and little devotional readings and short readings and even some extended readings, if you'll just text MIRACLE to 434-423-5300. Just text MIRACLE. You'll receive some little readings that you can walk through at your own pace about the miracles of God. Thank you for being here today. Would you bow your heads for another brief word of prayer? Father in heaven, thank you for your love. Thank you for your hope. Thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the resurrection and how Christ is changing lives to this day, to this day. May they have a great time over at the Dover Foxcroft with the Easter egg hunt and the children and young family worship. May we have an awesome time as some of us gather now for Bible studies and others head out to a brunch. May we have a beautiful time at the 1115 worship service as we celebrate you, the risen Lord and Savior. In Christ's name I pray, amen. amen. On your way out, please tell somebody. Great to see you. Hope you have a good day. Could you take me to lunch? For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only Son to save us, whoever believes in him will live forever.
them down at the foot.